Jean-Michel Correa from Paris, France. And it is my pleasure to open the session, the satellite symposium uh, called uh, Ultra Fast Imaging Innovations in Ultrasound for Daily Practice. So uh, first presenter will be Jacques Souquet, uh, uh, co-founder of uh, the uh, supersonic imaging uh, company. Thank you, thank you Jean-Michel. Uh, yes, there's been some changes in the program. The, the first speaker, unfortunately, is sick and couldn't come here. It's Dr. Fritz Schaefer, so I'm uh, um, filling in for him on a totally different topic because I know very little, almost nothing, on, on breast imaging. I'm, I'm a technical person. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, ultrafast imaging and the advantage of ultrafast imaging. I would like to start with, with this, uh, this sequence in, in here which is uh, a, a unique sequence which has been filmed with a high-speed camera. And what you see at very high speed are deformations that you cannot see at all at uh, regular speed of visualization. And we are doing exactly the same thing in ultrasound, being able to capture data at very high frame rate and by looking at it at a much lower speed, being able to look at subtle displacement in tissue kept that could not be seen at, the, at, at, regular, at, the, at regular speed, at regular frame rate. So capable of acquiring data up to 20,000 frames per second. So what, has, what have been the advantages for such a technique? Well, number one is being able to look at shear wave elastography in real time in a quantitative fashion and in 3D. The image that you have in here is, uh, is an image of a, a breast lesion, looking at it in 3D with shear wave elastography. The other advantage of ultrafast, we looked at all the modes of imaging, and on the first mode, we decided to apply ultrafast to new Doppler technique being able to change the paradigm between color flow and pulse Doppler for quantification. And with ultrafast imaging, we can greatly enhance the temporal resolution of color flow, which enables us to do the quantification PW Doppler directly on the color flow data set, improving workflow and, and, and computation. And by leveraging this ultrafast Doppler acquisition, uh, and combining it with new uh, filtering technique, we're able to image microvasculature that we call NGO plus in, uh, in, in tissues, in lesions, uh, being able to visualize slow flow in very tiny vessels without the use of contrast agent. And by combining everything together, being able to show all the data together this is how we also can leverage ultrafast acquisition in this new mode of imaging, which <coughs> combine the real-time acquisition of both anatomical information, B mode, stiffness information, shear wave elastography. This is the, the bluish color in here, and color flow information, and being able to blend all the data together in one single acquisition. So shear wave elastography can be applied on, on, on various uh, organs for all the probes, breast cancer, liver cancer, fibrosis staging, uh, arterial rigidity, or being able also to assess, there is a, a plaque here uh, on the bifurcation of the carotid on top, being able to assess the, or hopefully characterize the plaque uh, in thyroid nodules, uh, can do that on transplanted kidneys, on muscle and tendon, this is tendon elasticity and this is muscle imaging, prostate also and lots of other different organs as well. So it, it, it does work on all kind of probes, frequency and shape. Now if we look at um, the struggle between the conventional Doppler and ultrafast Doppler, as you know in conventional Doppler, it's in fact two different modes for color flow we only need a limited resolution, 10 points per pixel, pixel to estimate a mean velocity. But as soon as you want to quantify, we have to shoot in the same direction to acquire more data, more points to be able to uh, improve the resolution and then quantify. 
The, the strength of ultra-fast Doppler is that we can acquire and gather the complete uh, Doppler information on the entire image at high resolution. So with a single acquisition, we can complete that data set. And when combining it with a new generation of uh, spatial temporal filtering in here, we can greatly enhance the sensitivity of the Doppler signal demonstrated here on a transplanted kidney using this ultra-sensitive uh, new Doppler technique uh, or other uh, images. Uh, the center one on top, this is a, uh, a, a lesion in a, in a kidney, in a, in a liver. Uh, you have thyroid on the bottom, you have liver images in here. So being able to greatly enhance uh, the sensitivity of a Doppler signal. Where can we go from here? Can, and I would like to share with you a, a, a peek of our vision for, for, for the future and, and the role that ultrasound can play in potentially displacing other uh, imaging modalities. And uh, this peak of the future, uh, I would like to look at the concept of uh, functional imaging for ultrasound and, and looking at the challenge, which is the brain. And, and as you know, uh, there are lots of techniques which are being used uh, from MR, PET, uh, optical imaging, and, and where is ultrasound? And, and if you look at the respective strengths and weakness for ultrasound, you see that ultrasound has lots of good strengths as far as penetration, spatial resolution, temporal resolution. The big weakness is signal to noise ratio, it's sensitivity. So with the new techniques that um, uh, we have implemented, the goal is to being able to significantly increase that sensitivity and talk about the role of uh, ultrasound as a functional imaging technique. And, and I would like to illustrate this um, by using our best friend, the rat. What you have here are images obtained with a conventional ultrasound probe, an SL154, on a, on a rat brain. It's real time. The uh, images are about two centimeter by two centimeter. And this is using those, uh, that extra sensitivity of a Doppler signal to give you a, a frame of reference. Some of the vessels that, uh, that we're looking at are, are below 80 microns. So very, very high sensitivity and being able to use color coded for, for looking at uh, the direction of, uh, of, of the flow, uh, but also being able to map uh, the complete uh, flow in here in, in 3D and being able to navigate inside the data which has been acquired. Now you will say, okay, nice, uh, this is a rat, uh, this is not a, a human being. Well, when uh, we looked at where can we look at the brain <coughs> in, an, in an easy manner, so we entertained the uh, relationship that, uh, that we had with a uh, children's Hospital in Paris and looking at preterm infant uh, through the fontanelle. Uh, so you have classical uh, images here of, uh, of, of the brain and, and this is kind of a vessel structure that we are able to look at in the brain. This is very low power. We use here plane wave. We don't use focused wave, focused ultrasound wave. So it's much lower power than conventional uh, approaches to ultrasound. So we acquire here the whole data set of, uh, of, of Doppler and, and being able also to visualize the pulsatility of, of the flow as, as well. But as we have this complete data set, uh, what are other parameters of interest that we can look at? So we, we played a little bit with it and we demonstrated that uh, as you can see in that picture, that we are able to build in real time a map of resistivity here in a single cardiac cycle. Instead of measuring resistivity of a vessel in, in one given point in space, as we have the uh, old data, we can map the entire resistivity map. There are other maps that we can look at, but it's just an example 
or the, or the advantage of being able to acquire the whole data and then analyzing the whole data in, in, one, in, in one suite. So if you uh, want to look at uh, our, our vision uh, and in a conclusion, where is ultra-fast ultrasound imaging leading us? Well, as far as tissue motion, there is a shear wave elastography to look at uh, tissue stiffness, elasticity, but there is another parameter of interest which I have not shown you yet that we can look at also tissue viscosity, which is another mechanical parameter that we can evaluate in a non-invasive and quantitative fashion. We can image all natural wave in, in, in the body. Uh, for blood motion, uh, we can uh, leverage this ultra-fast acquisition in, in the Doppler domain. Uh, by blending ultrasound and optical wave, uh, we can uh, uh, build a device looking at photoacoustic in real time and being able to assess uh, angiogenesis in lesions, uh, breast uh, being an example. In the domain of using micro bubbles uh, and uh, leveraging contrast agent, this leads to what we call a real time molecular imaging. Uh, this ultra-fast capability, this is where it, uh, it, it's going to lead, lead us. And in the neurovascular coupling, as I've shown, functional ultrasound of brain activity e is a domain that we are keenly interested in and we strongly believe will play a role in the future of ultrasound. So I, I want to stop here and uh, thank you very much for your attention.